Huh. Mario. We had a discussion on the phone, which was like a half hour episode. It right? was. We didn't record that. <laughs> it I was. Don't know. But it's interesting to me, and this is roughly around the time Volvo pull out his phone. Um, in 2021, there's going to be some Buffalo Bills suiting up. Yeah. That won't suit up for the Buffalo Bills in 2020. Oh, uh, yeah. Kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but it's, it, it would influence how the 2021 season is him. Right. So what are some guys that are free agents for the Bills next year that may not be in a Bills uniform in 2022? Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. So are we going free agents voluntarily? Are we going free agents, maybe not so voluntary? Let's start with the the, the noted free agents that they're, this is their last year of their deal. Okay. And we always know how that plays out. Guys just play out of their mind on their last year. Yeah. Last year of the deal. Yep, yep. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. That'd be a fun I'm exercise. Down. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Getting your 100% right. Paul pulls out his phone for this one. <laughs> you pull out your phone, I pull out a big one. Oh, it's really not a bad arrangement when you think about it. No, 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 because if I pull out the phone, I get hit. Oh, yeah. No, you're not allowed to do that. It's bad enough people say, Mario, keep both hands on the wheel. It's really hard to do that when you're shoving a, a butter-glazed bagel down your gullet. Butter-glazed. Mario, you could squeeze that thing on top of popcorn. <laughs> I could. It would be delicious. Ooh. Cinnamon raisin popcorn? I feel like that's a hard pass. Call, call the patent department. I'm, I'm trademarking that. Yeah, I feel like... Yeah, no, I don't think that's going to go the way you think it's going to go. Cinnamon raisin popcorn? Hey, Jeffrey Bezos. Oh, God. <laughs> here, please, no. My God, please no. That's going to be the theme of the whole episode of this week. Yeah. Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> oh, I'm aware. Okay. I'm just going to splice it. Up. <laughs> yeah, just have a flyby of Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey. The ambiguously gay duo. The ambiguously gay duo. The ambiguously gay Facing duo. Jerry. They're fighting off evil, come what may. <laughs> They're ambiguously gay in an ambiguous way. I can't believe You're right there, champ. No. <laughs> the fact that you knew they had to drop that hat. Hey, ringtones from 1997 <laughs> don't always escape you. Yeah, so, so uh, free agents for the Buffalo Bills in 2022. The, Voluntarily. <clears throat> Voluntary, right. So, SpotTrack is often a good resource for something like this. Overthecap.com is great, but it doesn't give you the gear on the front of the page to tell you when their contract's terminating. You kind of have to, like, you have to go to their free agent page and figure out. SpotTrack is a little bit better for this. Okay. So the downside to SpotTrack is it also keeps track of the players who were on the team or are no longer on the team. So, like, okay, it's... It's not. So basically, a, a player that was going to be a free agent in 2022 that was already cut? Uh, so, like, Something as like an example, that. Andre Roberts is on here because... Whoops. Yeah, right. So it's because they also put what team they went to. So it's it's not the perfect. Okay. It's not, it's not the perfect. So I got, an idea. All right. I got an idea for this episode. Yeah. Here's what we do. We pick five. You pick five names. Okay. We'll take turns. All right. Yes or no, we'll be on the bills, and we have to try to argue that point. So, like, for example, Jerry Hughes. 
Okay. He's in the last year of his deal, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. I'll let you pick first. You say, is he going to be a bill in 2022 or not? Okay. Oh. I, I'll, I have to take the opposite point. I got it. I got it. All right. Oh. Oh, cookies. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, a lot of free agents? Yeah, there's a few. What, Bean signs one year brewery deals with guys? Who? Yeah, who, who would have thought? thought? Really? And those guys prove it, and then they sign big deals somewhere else, and then he gets a commit start. Wait, it's not that episode. No. It's not that episode. No. Um, yeah, there's like 35 players. <laughs> That, right. that number might be conservative. So, Star Wars, I guess, at this point? There's probably like 20 of them. There's a lot of guys who are probably starting for Buffalo on this list. All right, fine. Rabbit Star, let's end it. All, all right. right. Thanks for coming, guys. No. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll go five. I'm okay. down with five. Okay, okay. we more. It's not a deal. Yeah, okay. So, there's, there's 37 players on this list. I'm not saying we can do 37. I'm saying we can do eight, 10, whatever. Okay, yeah, I'm down. Okay, ready? We'll start with the big dogs, Jerry Hughes. You want me to go? Yeah. No. He's yeah. not a bill in 2022. He's 35 years old. They've maximized. Unless he's willing to sign a friendly two-year deal, one-year deal, so many other contracts to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, you just have to look at diminishing returns. And the fact mm-hmm. that you already put so many resources in there, I think one, you could find a veteran defensive end at some point, a rotational defensive end somewhere yeah like you can find him somewhere i don't know if jerry's going to be ready to do that maybe he is maybe his contracts maybe his next contract says he will but i don't know if jerry's really ready to do that but one of the very first re-signings of bean in his tenure was a guy that he didn't bring in yeah. and jerry used he extended him right when the market was becoming really huge for defensive ends right uh as far as the prices that these guys were getting plus you drafted three in the past two years yeah this is the reason why you can get right. younger at the position anyway. Right, exactly. All right. All right. Next, Mario Addison. He restructured his deal. This is the final year of his deal. I'm not sure. He he, he, he may not be a bill in 2021. I'm with you there. Yeah. In this I'm year. with you there. Yeah, it's any money that you – like, His he's going to cost what he's going to cost, whether he's on or off the team. What? What? Paul, we've said – oh, God, I get deja vu. I think we were on this stretch of road when we said that. That exact phrase was said about Trent Murphy last year, and they kept him. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So is this one of those scenarios where I don't he, know. he's the same cost to you off, on and off the field? Uh, off the field? Maybe. I mean, he doesn't hurt you being on there. You got if, – if, if that's the defensive end that, that McDermott wants, and he drafted three of them in the past two years – what better guy for them to learn and, from? I mean, Mark, historically, they only keep five defensive ends. I understand that. I totally get it. But I think – bless you. Thank you. That all being said, you could sacrifice a position somewhere else. I think they would be willing to sacrifice a linebacker for another defensive end. Oh, man, I think linebackers more important. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm just saying I think they all would. Right. Okay. I still don't think he makes this roster. I still well, I'm with you, but okay. I'm going on history of they yeah. kept Trent Murphy when they thought, you know, man, eight million dollars would have been nice to. Doesn't the same logic apply to Jerry Hughes though? It does, it does. But who are the defensive ends going to learn from? That? I mean, last year you had Epineza. I mean, he's not a, he's, he's not a Trent Murphy guy. You know what I mean? They're not like comparable in that respect. Right. But he played on the same side. He was asked to set the edge. He was asked to do a bunch of different things. I don't know. I, it's I think that's – they're going to use Addison and Hughes to teach the young bucks to come in next year. Vernon Butler. Gone. Yeah. No. And we're done with that conversation. <laughs> and I like Vernon Butler. I do. A lot of Panthers. And just – Star? Yeah, he's still, he's still got Star. Okay. There's other defensive. You still have a hit Oliver. Like, the, the Bills just rotate these defensive ends on one year. Their defensive tackles on one year. Well. The guy's a beast. Yeah. Oh, you still got that Oliver. <laughs> The guy's the not – it's like it's like a Rams YouTuber going, yeah, we still got Donald. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, Emmanuel Sanders. No. Okay, you think he's gone in 2022? Absolutely. I think 
I'm really excited to see what he does this year. See, here's the thing. I'm really excited. It is not the responsibility of Hughes and Addison to coach up Russo, Epineza, and Boogie. Bob okay. Asher. Right? Okay. It's not their responsibility. you got to learn under them. Right. What do they do on a daily basis? What's their – about being a pro. We always said that all the time. Yep. Like, these, these kids got to learn how to be a pro. Hodges and Davis – He's got to learn to be a pro. Sanders has been around the league. He's You don't get to 34 in the NFL not knowing what you're doing. Right. So, oh, yeah. expert, I mean, having him and Diggs in the, in the room, I think, is amazing for these young guys, but it's not his responsibility to teach these young guys to take this position. No. There's a reason he only signed a one-year deal. Very plausible. Well, I think it's I think at the stage of his career, that's what happens. You go, okay, I... I can pick where I want to go. He's in a position where he can pick where yes. he wants to go. Yes. Right. But now, I, I don't want everybody to get the wrong impression. I'm talking purely about off the field stuff. Right. I'm not saying that Hodges and Davis are going to take Emmanuel's position mm-hmm. on the field because what's, what's Sanders going to try to do this year? Uh, uh, let's see here. I think, I feel like. <laughs> I'm not, but the point was, I'm just saying, that's not on the field stuff. I'm talking purely off the field. But Sanders, he's he's gonna have a very unique role this year, I think. That's gonna be a different episode, right? That's gonna be uh, okay. All right, that's, that's fine. We have to um, more. So here's a weird one. Okay, Ike Butker. Yes, he's he's not a restricted free agent. He's actually gonna hit the real free agent market. Yes, they keep him. You think they you think they resign Ike Butker? To quote somebody recently, "This is what you're gonna be building for the future." This, yeah, the kind of line yes. yeah. this is the kind of line. This is the line. You can't replace, I guess, he's not really homegrown talent, but. No. Ah, thank you. Okay. Uh, he's not really homegrown talent, but the guy was on your practice squad, called up, coached up, started. He's not, he's not a pretty guy. Like, he's. He's a very dirty worker. Oh, that's you know, like he works really hard for the production you get out of him. He, if you were to, if you were to define guards in the NFL, I think Feliciano and Butker come come, come to mind. Yeah, like they're just ugly grinders. Yeah, and that's it. And that's what I want. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do. But for the cost of Ike Butker and the cost around Ike Butker, yeah, he will be affordable for you than any other any other guy, unless you draft one. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I do love Lamp. I love Lamp. Who is also on this list? Forrest Lamp. Forrest Lamp will not make it to week five. He will be traded for an asset by week oh. five. Oh. See, that's interesting. I would want him to start all year. Yeah, see, but, that's, that's the way I'm leaning here. I feel like Lamp is probably the more likely starter at that left guard position over Bucker. So you start – so they sign Lamp to play left guard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, follow me here. You, you sign Lamp to start at left guard over Ike Butker, driving down contract for Butker next year because he didn't start. Lamp signs a big deal somewhere else. You get a compensatory third. So then you sign Butker – and then draft his replacement in the third round, compensatory third. That's so stupid. Why would I think that? That's yeah, I know. I don't know. It's probable. It is a probable thing. It is probable. But, I mean, it's – Buffalo it builds the, these lines with one-year deals, and then they just, you know, basically knife fight each other over a starting job, and then – Whoever doesn't make it either gets traded if they've got starting experience. Buffalo did it with Wyatt Teller. They had a guy that was going to be a usable asset, mm-hmm. and off he went. And you look at the depth on this line. The line has dealt with attrition the last few years. You know, you build the best team you can, and then those assets that you don't need, it turns out you don't need. You yeah. You get what you can. Oh, yeah. Um, ooh. You ready? No. Go ahead. Levi Wallace. Not a one-year deal. God damn. That's a good one. That's I think so the good. I Wallace discussion is a really – it's a really fun discussion because there's such a huge contingent of people that think he is just not good, right? 
and he, he is a very good CB2. He'll never be a CB1. He would be an ideal CB3. You right? know what, Paul? <laughs> Ideally, I find... I'd like to think I'm a pretty good-looking guy. Okay. You put me next to Thor. No one's going to be looking at me. Right. Okay. Levi Wallace, in and of himself, is a solid corner. I like Levi Wallace. Yeah. The problem is... He's got that maniac across from him, yeah. so he's always picked on. Yeah. He is always picked on. Right. Um, so that res- in that respect, I think that's why people get down on Levi Wallace. Now, oh, him being signed, though? He signed a really deep, friendly one-year deal, Marv. I mean, you, what do you sign him for, though? Three for 30? Well, that's the next step, right? Yeah, I, th- th- I always go step. there. Right? $10 million is like the base for a, a role player corner right. like that. But here's the thing. He's going to realize his value as, okay, high, high Poyer and White. For the last couple of years, I've played 100% of the snaps. Mm-hmm. It's not like if you pay a defensive tackle on this team who's going to play 40% of the snaps versus Levi who's going to play 100 I know it's two completely different positions, but that's one of the selling points for some of these players is that, listen, I'm on the field all the time. Mm-hmm. What are you, you going to pay me for? I'm going to give you. Well, and here's where I sit with this, right? Mm-hmm. I think Levi is likely brought back, and, and here's why. At some point, you're going to need to put some level of actual draft asset in the deep secondary or on the edge of the secondary, right? Yeah. You got Trey, that's great. But you're going to need to put at least some higher level asset in there through the draft. You're going to need to draft a safety at some point. You're going to need to draft a corner at some point. Soon. No like, faith in Wild Goose? No. <laughs> okay, I'm halfway through this donut. There's no cream? No cream. Who wants cream? Who wants cream? Okay. Marva, you're still on radio. Okay, no cream. That's what an interesting... Oh, man. Yeah, I, I think it's... Not, I, The Levi Wallace debate, they're going to have to put some sort of asset there eventually, right? Uh-huh. And I still feel like the safety position is probably the one that, that ends up being. Mm-hmm. That's why I was so adamant about the Buffalo Bills drafting the safety this year. Mm-hmm. For the same reason you, you drive to defensive ends, mm-hmm. um, to learn in the system, get younger at the position. You got Hyde and you back there. Not forever. I mean, they are. Not forever, ever. Forever, ever. <laughs> forever, ever is gone. Um, forever young. You just totally switched it up. I just went from outcast to whoever the hell sings forever young. Bro, you're older. That song's in your generation, not in mine. So let's just draw the line right there. I just don't know who sings that. It wasn't an old joke. It was a. My brain has so much capacity for music. <laughs> you want me? To, you want me to go to karaoke and sing that? Yeah, but I don't know who sings the song originally. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine that. Ninety-six point one finds it on your dial very often. It's always there. Ninety-six point one. Oh yeah. Smooth jams. On my way, it's on the it's the detour from ninety three seven to ninety seven seven. Big detour. <laughs> it's on the way. It's on the way. Like uh, if I was gonna drive to Florida, Utah's on the way. Yeah, makes total sense. What state are you going to stop it along the way? Ah, one of the square ones. Uh, confusion, ah, maybe yeah, anarchy. Yeah, Utah. That state's square enough. Let's stop in a square state. I can stand in four states at once, dude. That's a weird thing about think about it. the East Coast, right? All the states are all drawn like a drunken toddler through the state lines, and then you get to like the middle of the country, and all the states start being square, and you're like, okay, this actually starts to make a bit more sense. Yeah. And then you get to North Dakota and South Dakota. You're like, it's the same place. There's like 3,000 people in both of them. North Dakota. Why that's, have two Dakotas? That's basically, why do we have two Dakotas? Why don't we give them to Canada? You guys want the Dakotas? They'd still want to be called South Canada if they want to draw lines. <laughs>